begin, I'd like to welcome everyone to our 4 p.m. Mass. Also, to those who will be watching this online, welcome as well. So let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. My brothers and sisters, as we acknowledge our sins so as to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me, for the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. To God in the highest and on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God Almighty Father. Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us, you take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For 
foundation of your love through our Lord Jesus Christ your son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit God forever and ever A reading from the book of Job. The Lord addressed Job out of the storm and said, Who shut within doors the sea when it burst forth from the womb? When I made the clouds its garment and thick darkness its swaddling bands? When I set limits for it and fastened the bar of its door and said, Thus far shall you come, but no farther and here shall your proud ways be still. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. to their desire, Avon. 
Let them give thanks to the Lord for his kindness and his wondrous deeds to the children of men. Give thanks to the Lord, his love is everlasting. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the love of Christ impels us once we have come to the conviction that one died for all. Therefore, all have died. He indeed died for all, so that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. Consequently, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even if we once knew Christ according to the flesh, yet know we know him so no longer. So whoever is in Christ is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, New things have come. The word of the Lord. According to Mark. On that day, as the evening drew on, Jesus said to his disciples, Let us cross to the other side. Leaving the crowd, they took Jesus with them in the boat just as he was, and other boats were with him. A violent squall came up, and waves were breaking over the boat so that it was already filling up. Jesus was in the stern, asleep on a cushion. They woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up, rebuked the wind, and said to the sea, Quiet, be still. The wind ceased, and there was great calm. Then he asked them, Why are you terrified? Do you not yet have faith? They were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this whom even the wind and sea obey? The Gospel of the Lord. Good evening, brothers and sisters in Christ. You know, in the midst of any kind of adversity, we bring our faith to the forefront. And we ask the Lord God every time this happens to us, help, help, help. 
People always do this when there's a disaster, when there's a catastrophe, when there's a calamity of some sort. And you know what, brothers and sisters, we'll be tested. Maybe it'll be a forest fire. You know, like down in Rio Doso. I bet those people were saying, help me, Lord, help. You know, the most horrible situations, earthquakes, famines, tsunamis, or some massive death of people. And there's this fear that grips people instantly. Our faith is supposed to help us and say, Lord, help quiet the storm. The Lord does come through on many occasions. Sometimes we have to suffer with it. But you know, it's amazing how God does come into the picture and helps us through the whole mess. You know, knowledge of God keeps us strong and, 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 and strong in our faith. And this is why we need to always read more scripture on a regular basis. You know, God can change things in an instant. Didn't Jesus do that in the boat? When it was, the, it was windy, the sea was splashing, and the apostles were in fear. Doesn't the master care about us? And of course they wake him up and you know he instantly quiet silence and the sea obeys him and the wind obeys him and you know there's this instant calm again in, in the boat and they're in awe and you know this awness is something I think we we all have can share in on a regular basis when we run into some kind of disaster that's uh, imminent or in front of us. You know, every catastrophe, there's always this going to be this fright. And you know, we need to trust on a regular basis. Just as the apostles in the boat struggled with, you know, uh, that fear gripping them, and they wondered why Jesus didn't stop it, you know, he could have woken up and, but they had to wake him. Some people say today, the Lord's abandoned me. I've got all this fear in me, help me Lord. And I think the Lord does say, quiet, be at peace, I am near you. Don't lose your faith. And I think all of this, of course, brothers and sisters, when we have this fear comes, from concupiscence, from original sin, where we struggle to trust. We sometimes fail to trust in God, and we want to hold on to our own virtues and strengths. You know, many times it is a struggle for all of us to trust in God. But I think when we do put our trust in God on a regular basis, He comes through. You know, Job persevered a great deal. He was one where he had everything at his beck and call, wealthy, everything he had, God blessed him with. And then the devil came to test him. You know, Job trusted. When you think of Job, how he, his faith was so strong, the devil is trying to test him and change that trust change that faith as he as the devil really robbed him of his wealth his children everything he had nothing left but his wife and he persevered and persevered until he persevered to the very end and the lord rewarded him twice as much and I think that's a great example for us when we read about Job. It's important. You know, there was a story of a, a man who was climbing a thousand foot cliff. Three quarters of the way up, the rope slipped and he slipped. And you know, he's still attached to a rope, but he was falling and he thought to himself, I'm gonna die. And he said, Lord, help me. And instantly the rope got caught on a, 
on a wedge there and he didn't crash. Was he ever so thankful? There's another story of a wealthy man who owned this huge yacht and he was out in the ocean and there was a storm approaching and he thought, no, I'm going to weather the storm. It's not going to be a problem. I've got my, my big boat here. And so quickly it escalated into a hurricane and it began to just beat his yacht apart. Most of the crew had already been washed off. The owner was figured, well, this is, this is how it's going to be. This is going to be the very end. Because the hurricane increased, there was one man whose faith was there and said, Lord, help me. And everybody was washed off that boat. But that man who yelled out to the Lord God was the only one who survived. He was the lone survivor, and he attributed it to God coming and rescuing him. You know, I think, brothers and sisters, we always need to have our faith right here at the edge, to ask the Lord God. There was another experience of a man who was uh, flying a big aircraft, and there was smoke in the cockpit, and he realized this is major, something's really wrong and he couldn't read his instruments and the alarms went off and everybody in the plane braced and he thought to himself this is it this is the end and so the the plane began to go down it lost power and as he began he said to, again he had he was a man of faith lord help me with this and you know, the Lord did help him. He landed the airplane and nobody was killed. If we involve God, you know, with our struggles and our pains and our suffering, he does come into the picture. He lets us go through that suffering, but he's always there to help us. He's not gonna let us, you know, die in, in, in this way or that way. The Holy Spirit is the one who instantly moves into action and miracles happen on a regular basis. Now, I've told this story before. This was probably two, three months ago when I was driving down uh, 528 and Sandia Vista, uh, close to Iris, I just passed it and there was nobody behind me. This was on a Sunday, 6 p.m. Nobody's in front, nobody's in back. There's not anybody in the other lanes either. So there I am going down and this truck pulls out from Sandia Vista and I notice it the guy looks he sees me I see him where did he see me he didn't see me so he's plowing into that first lane and he's gonna plow into me instantly I jumped into the medium and heard this big bang it woke him up he was doing this I'm sorry. And for a second I said, thank you, Lord. It could have been instantly just totaled and nobody was on the road. I was like, Lord, help me. Now every time I get on the road, Lord, help me. And we all know how that is when we get, when it's crowded. If we don't ask the Lord God to strengthen us and to help us, we will experience the disasters. They will be a struggle. And they are painful. I think the disciples were alone, uh, slowly learning this, uh, this whole lesson. God is in charge. We just have to involve him. Wherever we go, whatever we do, wherever we're at, you know, and, and we know there's going to be disasters, whether they're auto accidents, uh, fires, forest fires, or wherever you are, you're at. But when we involve the Lord God and say, help, help, he does come to the rescue. And so we ask the Lord God to send that Holy Spirit in every dif difficulty. It doesn't have to be a disaster. It could be problems in our families, at work, at home, wherever we're at. 
God will show up. He always does. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let us stand to profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, and God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. That the church throughout the world may be united in prayer for the ongoing conversion of those who still do not know Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of Rui Doso, especially the displaced, and for the safety and protection of the Rio Rancho and all firefighters deployed to help fight the fires, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That lawmakers may work to reflect care and compassion for the poor and vulnerable in our society, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to abortion, euthanasia, terrorism, and all acts that harm the dignity of the human person, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in vocations to the priesthood and religious life, especially from within our parish and our archdiocese, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick in our daily prayers that God's healing touch may bring them peace and comfort, especially Kathy Golden, Carlos Martinez, Kayla Garcia, Bill Fisher, Monica Lacombe, and Michael Tobin, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the faithful departed may rest for all eternity in the loving embrace of our Lord, especially Lawrence Goddard, Jan Ferraro, Joni Barabi, Robert Recker, Bob Lydon, Harold Thompson, and Anne Abel, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the intentions of this Holy Mass, we pray for Paul Thomas Bensey and for the repose of the souls of Gregorita Garcia and Martha Huntington, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God the Father, mercies, hear our prayers and petitions. We ask them in faith, and we ask them through our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The offertory hymn is hymn number 601, The God of Abraham Praise, number 601. Uh, 
but to the supreme command. From earth we rise and see the joys at his right hand. He by him so has sworn, I on his oath depend. I shall on eagles wings upborn to heaven ascend. I shall behold his face, I shall his power adore, and see the wonders of his grace forevermore. There dwells the Lord our King, the Lord our righteousness, triumphant over the world in sin, the Prince of Peace. On Zion's sacred height, his kingdom still maintains, and glorious with his saints in light for Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, and grant that, cleansed by its action, we may make offering of a heart pleasing to you, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours, that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exaltation we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he Merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and John, our Archbishop, and all those who hold him to the truth and on the Catholic and Apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves, and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls. 
in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true, in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help through Christ our Lord. Amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us. This pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar and high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace.
Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with light, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
The communion hymn is hymn number 947, Draw Near and Take the Body of the Lord, number 947.
Let us pray. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption through Christ our Lord. We have five announcements today. The Church of Incarnation will have a memorial mass for Lawrence Goddard on Saturday, July the 6th at noon. Fill a tote, fill a tummy. We collected 3,106 pounds of food for St. Felix Pantry. Your generosity is truly appreciated. Thank you for bringing in that food. The Rosary Guild will have a rosary sale on Saturday, June 29th, from 3.30 p.m. to 6 p.m. in the ministry room in the church. Holy Communion rosaries and chaplets will be available. Catholic education is a great opportunity to invest in your child's future. The students you saw at Mass, the, the girl who read the first reading, and those children that brought up the gifts. Today we have Saint, uh, Sister Anne Louise, their principal, in the Narthex to answer any questions you might have about the school. They offer classes for pre-K through 8th grade. Financial aid and scholarships are available. Please stop by her table and get more information. What does rebuild my church mean to you? Your opinion matters. So please complete the survey in your pews and drop off your responses in the designated basket in the narthex. Those surveys are at the end of the pews with pens or pencils. It's just asking, what, how would you like to build, rebuild our church? There is no right answer or wrong answer. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The recessional hymn is hymn number 614. Holy God, we praise thy name. Number 614, verses 1, 2, and 4. Oh 